Well, let's have a look at the two teams tonight, starting with Watford, Backman in goal, Porteous, Pollock and Morris, Andrews, Lusa, Kayembe and Ebersele, Barr and Shabatanta and Bayo for Oxford, coming in goal, Long, Moore and Brown, Kioso, Box, McEachern and Lee, Goodrum and Rodriguez, and Dame Scarlett up front. Now, I talk about those Taylor-esque footsteps that have proved too big to fill for too many. You do get the impression the great man will be looking down on what's happening here with a look of approval. And there might be admiring glances towards Oxford too. A club who were top flight adversaries of Watford 40 years ago. They spent the entirety of this century outside the top two divisions until now. As Taylor had done at Watford, Des Buckingham won promotion in his first season in charge and consolidation the sole ambition this season. They could end the night ninth. They could also end it just two points above the bottom three. And with just one win separating 12th from 22nd, every single point is at a premium. These two clubs who in the grand scheme of things are happy to be where they are, but both Watford and Oxford will both think that there's scope for further improvement. Tonight's winner certainly will be delighted with how the table is looking at 10 o'clock. Watford yellow shirts, red shorts and socks, and Oxford in their change kit of white shirts and socks, uh, white shirts and shorts and black socks, and they will kick from right to left. And we get the game underway. Watford against Oxford in the Championship. Week 15 will be at just about one-third distance at the end of this weekend. Going into the next international break. Watford playing the ball for Shafford Tats are involved immediately. Turned over the top by Oxford winning it in midfield with Rodriguez. Stay getting Scarlett something to chase. And Ryan Porteous is there to mop up. But a good start for Oxford. Greg Lee coming across the take of yeah, that's right. And, you know, just obviously just started and Watford are going to be a team that's want to start playing at home on the front foot. But it's Oxford who have got a good set piece here with a possible long throw in. Watford needs to be careful with the knockdowns here. So just 40 seconds in. And it is Will Vox that launches it in towards the near post. And he didn't get enough distance on it. Had it back though by Goodrum. And Goodrum will get it in the return ball. is obliged really under pressure to work it all the way back to Kioso and he in turn to his goalkeeper Jamie Cumming who signed permanently in the summer after his loan move from Chelsea they had to play the transfer market so cleverly that's Buckingham talking earlier about the fact that the, the net spent one and a half million pounds for Oxford as he needed to make the necessary adjustments to like a second tier level for the first time since the 98-99 season 10 years in the third tier 11 in the fourth four years in the National League as well since they were last playing championship football back in the last days of the 20th century enjoying life at the moment 16th in the table and only out of the bottom three courtesy of that victory the other night here's Andrews for Watford who's playing on the right with Cassie Vesely over on the left drives it forward, one back in the midfield well by Oxford's Dane Scarlett nicked down the line by Greg Lee and Porteous comes out he thought that he might just have been able to touch the ball off Scarlett there but it will be a throw to Watford and potentially another opportunity for Vox although he's turned away and so it's going to be Greg Lee that will take this throw, it won't be another one launched inside the penalty area Lee just waiting for a little bit of movement eventually when it came from Goodrum he fired it in at him a little and it's one back by Barr for Watford. Way back then by Kayambe, who's been in good goal scoring form here. Four goals in his six league games at Vicarage Road this season. Watford get it forward towards Shaq Matadzic. And the Georgian, who really is a player that can get fans off their feet, getting the ball, but running out of room. That's the next best thing to getting it forward. He wins the throw, and Watford can build from the back again. Yeah, I think Watford want to try and get the ball to him as much as possible. I said earlier about having created 35 chances, 25 more than any other Watford player. He is their standout. But with Vakumbayo scoring four against Sheffield Wednesday, and then uh, well, only just uh, a week ago, let's try and get him the ball and get him into good positions as well. But it's been a decent start so far from Oxford. They don't look overall at the moment, despite their poor away form and Watford's very good home form. Here's Porteous back in the side, replacing Siralta at centre-half. 
And Sorrell deserving a ban for five yellow cards. And Porteous has just served his. And play four down the oh, touch on the off to the right by Sam Long, who's playing on the right of three centre halves today. And it goes out for a throw that'll be taken over on that uh, Oxford right hand side. Nil nil in the early stages, three and a half minutes played here on Talksport 2. Ball in the hands of Sam Long, launching the uh, throw forward. Ball brought under control, a chance to deliver a low one inside the penalty area. Here's Dane Scarlett, Scarlett getting it onto his left foot, he'll pull it back for Greg Lee. Lee with a left footed effort, and that's uh, pinged in the old rookery end and out of play for a goal kick. Four gone, nil nil. Well, it shows the confidence from Lee, doesn't it, wanting the strike from there. I think once the ball, he wasn't quite able to get it onto his left foot properly and then run onto it and had the shot with power. I don't think that was quite the right option, but as I say, Oxford have started well and he feels confident enough to, to have a pop 25 yards out. Daniel Bagman, turned to the goal kick for Watford. Launched long towards Bio, brought under control by Barr in the midfield from a touch from him round loose that. Now Barr will take it on down the right hand side of the penalty area. Faced up by Lee, who'll get inside the penalty area past Lee's challenge, but Brown could come across and do the rest and knock it away. Brought back down under control on halfway by Matty Pollock. And Waffle will try and get going again with James Morris, the uh, one time Southampton youngster. Four from Kayembe, Adolf Ebersele. Kayembe again. Watford just happy to string the passes together inside their own half of the, uh, the midfield third, really. Loser shows the ball, getting it in short, into feet, and then uh, turning it on his left foot back out to the far touch line again. Oxford very diligently just uh, watching what is going on. Not really engaging, no thoughts of a press necessarily here. Now Porteous will play it forward, and Barr will chase it, and uh, it knocks the ball out of the hands of the goalkeeper there. And Jamie coming, coming towards the edge of his penalty area, and it set up a little bit awkwardly for him after the bounce. He was expecting that the bounce was going to come through. That meant that it was there to be one really. He got there first, got his hands to it. Uh, Barr will claim that uh, his momentum at that stage was inevitable but I think he might just have caught him with the maybe the elbows he went to meet it as he went up for the ball and coming picking up a sore one around the side of the face yeah do you know what it's a foul it's not a yellow card but it's what you want your, your forward player to do when the ball bounces and he got in the box and you know, he's not coming out and completely claiming it first he has been caught but I don't have a problem with that, his arm was up, there was a, a collision there. I'm looking at Hugh, he thinks it's a little bit more than that, but I, I listen, I, I want my forward to chase the ball. And it wasn't like a, a proper elbow, it was just his, his arm was up trying to go for it, and there was a there was a collision, there was a contact. Certainly there to be chased by Quadwo Bar, who, aside from Rochdale, he had a lone spell at Burton last season. He used off the bench more often than he started this season, but he has got three goals to his name. A Watford with a, an excellent goal-scoring record this season, 22. And in Norwich and Sunderland have scored more than that. Jim, it just sends a little message as well to the keeper and also the Oxford defence that, you know what, I, I'm up for this. I, I'm going to give you a, a physical fight. And that, as I say, I don't think it was a yellow card or anything like that, but I think he's, it's a little sign of a statement of how today could go. Lee taking the throw towards the edge of the penalty area. Loser with a, a defensive header that kept Porteous honest. He had to hair after it and give it in down by the corner flag. He's turning back to his goalkeeper, Daniel Backman. And Barr will then head it on. And the pressure from Pierre and Brown, but it goes back to the goalkeeper. And it'll be cleared easily by Jamie Cumming, who's all right after that, coming together with Barr. Headed then by Porteous through the midfield. Helped on by Eberselli. Brought down by Sam Long who's just short of 250 games for his hometown club now just over 250 games I beg your pardon for his hometown club and just launching it forward but straight through to Daniel Backman who uh, really excelled the last time these two sides met well, that was a, a League Cup tie here during uh, Covid and Ken Semmer scoring a very late equaliser at Oxford and to equaliser Rob Hall goal 
who went to penalties and then Backman saved all three that he faced and Watford won the shootout 3-0 the last league meeting between these two 26 years ago yesterday settled by goals from Steve Palmer and Gifton Noel Williams in Watford's favour here uh, Vicarage Road Lucy will play the ball for it works in the defeat of Shaka Tadze try to release Bio with a ball down the inside right channel Lucy just got a bang to the top of the foot play goes on Andrews and then Kayembe playing it back to Lucy and I think Kayembe could have realised that Lucy had just been caught there he really didn't want that ball Andrews whipping across inside the penalty area easily cleared by Elliot Moore and Watford will come forward again Shaq Patanza diving heavy clearance once more from the Oxford captain Moore Watford winning a lot of the second ball at the moment. Morris getting it for And towards Ebersele. Kayembe urged to shoot. Lusa with a little step over. He's hoping the ball's going to find his way through towards Bio. It didn't. And now Oxford might be able to launch a counter-attack as McEachern gets it for. But Scarlett has fouled Porteous. And it's a free kick to Watford. They're quickly back in possession. Yeah, strong defending there from Porteous. And now Watford are just starting to show that they are the dominant side they're playing at home having a lot more possession now after that initial good start from Oxford still not creating too many chances Lusa just tried to do a little over there and it was unlucky but well read by the Oxford defence well, they have got such a good home record five home wins in the six league games that they played here this season drop points against Coventry but apart from that their record has been perfect in fact their last home defeat was also against Coventry. That was back in mid-March since then. Eight wins, four draws in their 12 games here, which makes it their best unbeaten home record for 26 years. The best at the start of a Watford manager's managerial career since 1903. He needs it just to keep his job. But no, he's done exceptionally well. Yet to experience defeat at home in those 12 matches. Here is Barr. Trying to twist and turn and get away from Greg Lee, who just stood firm. Barr ends up tumbling into him. And the ball goes out of play for what has been given the goal kick. So the Oxford fans had a really good view of that away to our right-hand side, who were booing because they felt as though it was a dive from Guadalupe Barr. Yeah, I think the words were, can you get up please, Barr, because that wasn't a foul. But, I mean, look, I, I like the way... It wasn't a foul, by the way. He, he's, he's knocked the ball past uh, Lee, and, and he's kind of just gone over him because he knows he's overplayed it there. But it's been a really positive start from Watford, I have to say. And I, I still feel if Oxford can get hold of the ball, I mean, they'd be quite happy to be without it at times and try and counter-attack. Uh, still got the feeling there could be both goals for, for both these teams in this game. Here's Scarlett making his way forward towards the edge of the penalty area and across comes Pollock forced to concede the first corner of the night as Dan Scarlett trying to get inside the box and Oxford will get the big guns forward as McCaffrey comes across the table yeah it's about quality of ball coming in and then trying to win the ball we know that Josh McCaffrey coming through the Chelsea Academy has certainly got quality I don't think that's ever been in doubt in his career and he put in a, a ball here with lots of quality Five inside the penalty area, ready to attack this. It's going to be a McEachern away swinger. Raises his right arm above his head. Hits it in towards the near post. Lee, the closest to it. Oh, it's clear by Watford defender Andrews into him. And out of play for a goal kick. The answer was no, Jim. <laughs> yeah, seven goals they've conceded from set pieces. It's the, the second worst record in the division. Oh, behind Sheffield Wednesday, Oxford on the other hand, there's one area where they've been really strong because they haven't conceded from a set piece as yet at all this season. 12 minutes in here on Talksport 2. Jim Bradford and Scott Minto alongside you. With uh, Watford, Oxford tonight here at Vicarage Road. The ball launched forward again. Oxford able to pick it up in the midfield with McCaffrey. Well, then worked by Will Volks for helps. On by uh, Ruben Rodriguez. Watford get it clear as far as Vox. Vox chips it forward. And Goodrum and actually he's done well to find a little bit of space about 10 yards outside the penalty area. He got away from Kayembe, but I don't think Vox spotted the pass and it was just flighted forward. And easy possession for Watford again picking it up at the back. He'll get it out towards Kayembe. Yeah, it wasn't a great ball, was it? And it was interesting. You know, Will Vox seems like a great signing for, for Oxford. It's not quite happened for him yet. You know, so much experience at championship level with Rotherham as well for Sheffield Wednesday, but it's just not quite happened and he's kind of inexplicably put passes 
in, into the path of the opposition that led to score goals. Andrews making his way forward here for Watford, a curving ball hit into his path. Barry drifts away, talking of uh, his old club, your old club, Rotherham, in action tonight in the Yorkshire Derby and a goal down at half-time at Oakwell until a Jonathan Russell goal. Barnsley won, Rotherham nil. It will take the Tykes up to fourth if they uh, hold on. I have to say one other thing about Will Volks, nothing to do with football, does incredible amounts for charity, an incredible person, good human being. So I know when Paul Warren was trying to sign players, it's all about being good human beings as well as good footballers. And, and Will Volks is, is certainly that. And, and even if he's not playing particularly well or had a bit of a, a difficult start to his Oxford career, I still know that he'll be very good in that dressing room as well. He is one of the senior pros. And if if Oxford are to stay up and it's still in the balance at the moment but it's been a good start so far to the season we're almost a third of the way through then he will play a key part all right good to hear all, right, all the work he does is not the only one plenty of them no absolutely plenty of them uh, around the country many many more than you would anticipate are giving a, a decent proportion of wages Hopefully. to charity and, and doing a lot of uh, unseen work uh, behind the scenes in their communities as well which uh, you know, a lot of people wouldn't have you believe, but it's definitely the case. I'm not missing anything here because Watford have got a player down. It's Matty Pollock who has got a problem with his knee. Uh, just his left knee is being attended to at the moment. Uh, Pollock, the centre-half aside from Grimsby, as a teenager, they don't need a problem at centre-half tonight. The Serrata already suspended and playing a back three with this change of shape. Uh, James Morris, who... Uh, uh, has played a lot of his football up to this point in his professional career as a left back but playing at centre half tonight uh, the benches incidentally for Watford Ince, Vata, Senna Duomo, Tikvic who were the natural replacement I think for Pollock if he couldn't continue Jebison, Dumbia, Larusi and Bond uh, the Oxford bench Harris, Ebue, El Mazzuni, Dale, Taravas, Goodwin Ferdinand, Golding and the substitute goalkeeper Ingram but Pollock still down receiving treatment here Scott Minton. yeah I just looked in the sideline Josh McEachern went over to, to Des Buckingham maybe he was called over and they were talking between the two and looking at how he's dressed Des it looks like he's ready to go down the pub to be honest with you rather than a football match in the championship very cool very cash you know it's quite a, a mild night here in the home counties and uh, some, some, some think that Jim there are some people alongside us who already have a thermos on well there's some temperature in the high 40s though. It's, it's not even coat weather yet I'll tell you when it is I'm expecting that to be about 20, 31 something like that uh, Pollock has uh, made his way over uh, towards the far side he's okay he's going to be able to come back on but I'm surprised he didn't out you there oh, I didn't need to uh, the problem is as far as Watford are concerned here that with Pollock off the field having received treatment they're temporarily down to 10 men as Volks launches another long throw inside the penalty area. Morris got on the end of it and then Epicelli in clearing it has smacked it against the nearest Oxford player and it drifts out for a goal kick. 17 minutes gone. And still nil nils. More championship action for you tomorrow here on TalkSport 2. 12.30 kickoff on Teesside. Middlesbrough against Luton. Luton with their win in the week taking them out of the bottom five. That's a 12.30 kickoff tomorrow. And two Premier League games for you on the network as well. West Ham against Everton also here on TalkSport 2. That's a 3 o'clock kickoff. And game day exclusive tomorrow is at 8 rather than being at lunchtime. It's 8 o'clock. Liverpool against Villa at Anfield. As Liverpool look to, by that stage, potentially go back to the top of the table, depending on what happens in Manchester City's game at Brighton earlier on tomorrow tea time. And we'll keep you updated with uh, that one as well. Want to get it forward here. Uh, we saw their full complement of 11. Bayer trying to hold it up. He's back to the direction of play. Ball work back to the Oxford goalkeeper coming. Shakhtar chasing after it. Want can pick up the uh, loose ball in the midfield again after the clearance from coming. And it's just worked by Kayembe. Back towards uh, Matty Pollock once more. Right bandage around his uh, right arm. Pollock, the play allowed to continue as uh, Greg Lee works it for. Pollock's got to come across and chase and mop up ahead of Dane Scarlett. It's out of play for another Oxford United throw. Yeah, it's a poor pass from Porteous there to Ryan Andrews. And 
box will just nip in and I think that's where they're going to be able to get a goal here Watford on the ball suddenly a misplaced pass and then quickly counter attack with the you know, what, they are exciting players attacking players Oxford have Fox heading it forward and Andrew's got the, the call to leave it let the ball drift out towards the touchline would have been a Watford throw then he elected to play it. he's uh, driven it forward given Bayer something to chase but it was uh, easy for Elliot Moore to be able to knock away Goodrum then is uh, battling in the midfield with Kayembe there's well one back and a lovely turn right in front of us from Kieran Brown and he can play through towards McEachern back from him to Long out to the the right hand side for the retreating Kioso and then Ruben Rodriguez just felt hands in his back and went the ground very quickly and a free kick has been given Oxford's way just inside their own half in terms of the uh, stats as you would anticipate probably with their away record and Oxford and uh, Watford's home record all the possession with the Hornets 73-27 through the opening 19 minutes with just one off-target attempt between the two sides so far that was from Oxford so Des Bucking will be delighted with the the defensive setup so far uh, the way that they've been able to restrict Watford to no opportunities at all and if you're into your expected goals as well Watford have a 0.00 so Des Buchanan will be even more happy with that although he does only have a 0.02 we need a chance a proper chance yep the night is young Watford have struggled actually habitually against newly promoted teams over the, the last couple of years or so just three wins in the last 16 games against sides who've just come up into the division that they're in one of those being this season's victory here against Derby the second home win of this uh, impressive home stand so far McEachern picking the ball up in the midfield again for Oxford it goes back via Kieran Brown to his goalkeeper coming getting it out the wards long and then he, he immediately told the defender that he had Shaq Fatanzi bearing down and he had to get rid of the ball quickly Watford pick it up and ran loose and works it forward Bar trying to take it on Greg Lee stood firm and knocked it away Kayembe's touch was a really poor one and Vox can get it forward here for Rodriguez and he'll play it through the middle for Scarlett but he's a yard at least offside he's got to look along the line he can see that Watford have pushed up so he's got to try and bend his run to stay on side yes he perhaps he needed that ball to come in first time but it wasn't so just hold your run stay on side and he was a good two or three yards off by the time the ball was played through to him still nil nil to Watford 7th at the start of the night and Oxford 16th here's Backman driving a, a low ball forward towards halfway an accurate one though towards Barr Barr and Bio haven't really been able to work in tandem particularly effectively so far tonight and Oxford have got possession back again and will work it out towards their right hand side for Peter Chiosa yeah and there's Chuck Matetti of course as well who is wanting to try and get on the ball as much as possible and not seen too much of him so absolutely Des Buchanan will be delighted with how his side have played so far and the longer it goes on like this the more the fans get frustrated that will then emit to the players and who knows what can happen but as I said at the start of the game it stays like this nil nil he'll take that all day long and the most pleasing aspect will be defensively so far because they've taken 15 points at home Oxford and only two away yet they've got a higher XG away from home than they've had at home so what's the problem the problem has been a stack of chances that they have been giving up on the road so the fact that they haven't even allowed Watford the merest hint of a side of goal through the opening quarter of the game is going to be a source of great encouragement for Des Buckingham here it is still nil nil midway through the first half yeah. on Talk Sport 2 when they're, with the, when they're on the ball they are a three at the back and, and the wing backs are trying to get wide and, and make the pitch big but when they're without the ball they, they quickly come in and make it difficult five at the back to break down Morris has got some defending to do and Rodriguez has passed him and then went down onto his knees inside the penalty area and he looked pleadingly at referee Anthony Backhouse but he was unmoved and players allowed to continue but Rodriguez had done really well there's no need for him to go down there as he tried to get round the back of James Morris now the ball has gone out of play he's going out and having a, a word with the referee and just having a, another look at it Scott there was arms on him outside the penalty area and he just waited until he could tumble inside the box before he went down but I think if there was an infringement it 
was outside the penalty area anyway. Yeah, I agree with that. I think when you got both arms around him, it is a foul, but it was outside. Had he got down early, that might have been a different story. Here's Andrews getting it forward at the other end for Watford. And Barr with the shot, a right-footed effort, blocked by Kieran Brown on the edge of the penalty area. And it's spun off the former Cardiff man. And out for a throw, which will be taken on the Watford right-hand side. And Andrews uh, picks the ball up, decides that he doesn't want that one. He's gone across to retrieve another one. I think he's probably gone across to retrieve a dry-out one. I think that that will be the, uh, the salient point there. And he bends back over the hoardings and he launches a long one in towards the near post. It's taken a walk of flick header off long. There's some shirt pulling going on from Barr. Play allowed to continue. Oxford wanted a defensive free kick there. Scarlett is back. He's given it away. Got caught in possession. Andrews clips it in. Nice shape on the ball. But Bayer didn't really attack it with any conviction. He couldn't get the run past long towards the ball. And it's comfortably played by Jamie Cumming. Yeah, that's what you want from your keeper to come out. Clearly he shouted because... The defender just moved out the way. And we're looking at replays of a battle going on in the defence. A possible handball from Oxford, not given. There's Goodrum bringing the ball forward. Just got caught by Porteous. No complaints at all from the Scotsman. Well, free kick 15 yards inside Watford territory for Oxford United in their change kit tonight of predominantly white. And Watford in their uh, customary yellow and red ball played out towards Kiyosa Kiyosa the Irish born Congolese defender signed from Rotherham way back now for Brown long ball four from him Batman didn't know whether to come out or not in the end he elected that for Andrews to play it under pressure from Greg Lee who's taken up some really advanced positions from left wing back now Rodriguez, Rodriguez with a little side footed ball forward towards Scarlett, he was on his heels. And that meant that Oxford could get it away. Then a lovely turn by Barr to get the better of Brown, he slips it inside towards Bio. Heavy touch from him, coming a little bit slow, arriving off his line. But such was the touch from Bio that he had half a chance where perhaps he didn't deserve one and he came out and gathered it. Yeah, the game's just starting to open up now. Oxford nearly went down the other end and didn't quite create an opportunity to score, but then Watford go down and it's a really good play first of all from Barr and, and, and you're right Bayer his play just a bit ahead of him so he stuck his leg out and he's not been able to control the ball with that first touch and in the end it's allowed Cummings to come out and just dive at his feet Oxford United bring the ball forward and win a throw over on the far touch line just two points for them away from home this season with draws at Luton and Portsmouth the defeats at Coventry in both league and cup uh, at Blackburn, Bristol City and Sunderland their game at Coventry uh, very early on in the campaign I think it was the first Friday of the season what a belting encounter that was 3-2 it finished to Coventry with a uh, Hadji Wright winner right at the death but it was a stunning game of football ball inside the penalty area here as Oxford bring it forward and Scarlett couldn't get on the end of it Oxford recycling in the midfield here with Will Vox. Don't get me going on Mark Robbins, don't. Not the time all the players. Uh, no, absolutely, totally agree. And uh, if there is a break in play, I'll get your views on it, although I know what they're going to be. Goodrum fires wide. And it will be a goal kick, which uh, will actually give us 10 seconds to discuss it. <laughs> so I'm not going to get you going on it, but <laughs> I'm yet to meet anybody that can understand the rationale behind the dismissal of okay. Mark Robbins. Jim, the game's gone. I mean, what that guy has done both on and off the pitch for the, the football club with so many financial crises as well, playing a different stadium, very nearly, to, well, taking them from League 2 to very nearly the Premier League. Not good. Well, welcome listeners from TalkSport to Vicarage Row. We play 27 minutes. It's Watford nil, Oxford nil. And it's a, a game that is just taking a little bit of time to get going in terms of clear-cut goal-scoring opportunity. We haven't had a shot on target as yet. Oxford have done well despite the fact they've got a really poor away record. They've been tied at the back. Watford have just had the one attempt so far despite having 60% of the ball through the opening 27 minutes. And undoubtedly Scott Minto, Des Buckingham, is going to be the happier of the two managers. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Watford had 73% at one time but not a shot on or off target at that particular moment at least they're trying to get forward a little bit more having all the possession but without a doubt oxford very comfortable defensively when 
Watford have got a great home record and Oxford have got such a bad away record. So I expect Watford to try and step it out, but it also might just allow the likes of Dane Scarlett and Rodriguez and Goodrum to, to try and cover any spaces with Watford playing the three at the back. Watford's home record so impressive, eight home wins in nine in all competitions here and unbeaten here since mid-March, Oxford away from home struggling, yet to really come close to their first away win and yet you wouldn't know it from what we've seen so far, the game is beginning to open up, it's a good ball play for towards Gradwo Barr who's been the liveliest of the front three for Watford so far, but Kieran Brown can mop up, the other talk sport app you can easily keep abreast of all of the action here at Vicarage Road or just ask a smart speaker to play Talk Sport 2. The commentary continues there with 29 minutes in. It's Watford nil, Oxford nil. And Morris has got the ball out the back here for the Hornets just outside the centre circle. Played by him towards Matty Pollock. Now down towards Porteous. And Porteous will take a touch and work it to back infield again. It's gone from one side of the uh, Watford back five all the way over to the other. Festi Abaselli, the former Derby trainee who's uh, arrived here on loan from Watford's sister club Udinese. And a player that is already a firm favourite amongst the Hornets supporters. One of those uh, get you on your feet players. Shaq Patanzi, another one of those who's seen very little of it, but she's making a run forward here, the Georgian. Well, they couldn't bring him in. Barr linking the play, finding Andrews. Now chipped over the top, and Bio's offside. Just tried on the turn to scoop the ball over the on-rushing coming. But the flag was up anyway, and the man that scored four last week yet to have a, a meaningful attempt on goal in the opening half hour here. Nil-nil. Yeah, well, that was tight. Very tight, and a well-timed, well, almost a well-timed run. You can see as the ball came back. Yeah, he was, he was he, I thought he was onside. He's onside there. Looking at a replay. Well, it didn't matter in the end because he didn't slip the ball in the back of the net. That's what you want to do. Well, obviously, with no VAR in the EFL, it wouldn't have mattered if he did, but he was onside. Yeah, Vacuum Bio, four goals in half an hour at Sheffield Wednesday. Well, sold to Udinese back in August. He's still here on loan. Former Celtic man, the Ivorian international. It's still moaning now that he, to the referee's assistant, that he was onside, and he, he's right. So this is a discussion that we've had a few times. He did get that one wrong, the assistant referee, but the quality that they show in making those decisions is absolutely exemplary. And I think the success rate officially is about 96, 97%. Yeah. Okay, that was one of the three or four percent. In the end, he, it was academic because he missed the chance. But I think the point is there that, yeah, he got it wrong, but that really is such an exception to the rule. No, absolutely. You, you see it quite often. And... You know, I do hear some people sort of saying, oh, well, yeah, that was clearly a, an easy decision. Well, that's because people are pausing it, you know, playing at the speed that they're seeing at the moment. So, no, 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 they do they're, they're a great job. Uh, not quite there. Imran Lusa playing it for uh, Bio losing possession under a, a challenge from Moore. Oxford work it back to the goalkeeper. It's uh, driven forward over halfway. And then chested down by Barr. Barr getting it into the feet of Bio again. And then a strong challenge coming in on Scar. The referee's given the free kick for the, the initial infringement, which was uh, a pull of the shirt on Bio. Well, I think the Porteous knew that there was uh, going to be a free kick given, and he had a free shot. Eberselli getting in inside the area. And it's come off the uh, retreated Kioso and goes out for Watford's first corner of the night. Yeah, and that's the first time that Watford have been able to really attack with any pace and open Oxford up a little bit. Jack Batadzi had the ball. I wonder whether he was going to come inside. He was close to, to the 18-yard box. He played it outside in the end to Eberselli, who, of course, is a, is a right-footed left wing back tonight. And with his left foot, not quite quite able to put the quality of ball in that he can if he were on the right. Uh, so uh, four man-to-man -man mark in the rest zone as far as Oxford are concerned. Coming punches away from a crowded six-yard box and then he's going to have to deal uh, with a deflected effort from Imran Lusa. Uh, that just uh, looped up so invitingly for him. There's no pressure on the ball. And he can make a comfortable catch. Watford squandering their first set piece. Yeah, but Dane Scarlett did really well there as the ball was, was headed out on the edge of the box. He made sure that shot wasn't allowed to come back in and in the end it just looped up into the hands of Jamie Cumming. That's what you want from your striker. That's talking about defending from the front. Good run. 
And he'll continue his run for now. Was he clipped off the ball? Yes, he was. And as a consequence, is this going to be a yellow card? Oxford fans chanting off. I mean, there were so many covering defenders. There's no chance it could be a red card, but it is a yellow. And the Porches can have no complaints at all. Just back in the side from suspension. And he's the first player to have his name taken tonight. Yeah, he's got to be careful in those situations, isn't he? He thinks that, that possibly that Scarlett is through. In fact, not Scarlett, Goodrum. It's a very cynical professional foul that there was a covering player, so it's not a red card, but definitely a yellow. Well, it has done. It has given Oxford an opportunity from this set piece, which isn't within shooting distance. Will Volk stands over it, hands on hips. It's 15 yards outside the penalty area, actually looking at where uh, a two-man Watford wall is assembled, although that's now broken and it's just the one. The bars got his eye on a runner and the ball played down the right-hand side of the penalty area instead. But where the spray has been put down suggests that actually it's probably 18 yards outside the box. Unless you're Roberto Carlos, you're not shooting from here. Volks clipping it in, right-footed. Uh, it's easily headed away by uh, Matty Pollock. Brown then with the next touch just puts it straight out for a throw. Yeah, Roberto Carlos, Janino Pernambucano, they both have fancied their chances and uh, there might have been a little bit of money going on the table that one or other would have scored, but well, not I, I, too I, many these days. I, I'm still picturing that goal, which is just outrageous how much it bent, but I think Roberto Carlos tried that for the rest of his career and still couldn't quite get it. Not that far out anyway, he scored certainly enough goals in his career to be a, a truly world-class left-back. Yeah, every subsequent one that he hit from 40 yards just made that 1997 one look all the better. <laughs> well, the ball is uh, worked down the Oxford left here. Greg Lee chasing after it. And there's another coming together and no complaints from Lee as the uh, referee finds in Watford's favour. Nil-nil here at Vicarage Road. Ten minutes to go to half-time. Yeah, just looking for a bit of magic here, aren't we? It's not quite happening. It's your typical championship game. I was here a couple of weeks ago with Watford Blackburn, and for all the world, it was nil-nil, and then there was a handball in the box, which the hand shouldn't have been here in the first place, and Watford took advantage of that. Might be one of those again, where one goal wins it. And there's me after predicting. I thought it would be goals of both teams. Oh, might yet be, but uh, very little evidence so far that that's how he's going to pan out. Looser going down in a strong challenge in the midfield. The referee says play on. Porteous then has lost it, and Goodrum can bring it forward. Tom Cleverley furious with him there. Shot comes in from the edge of the penalty area. That is blocked. Porteous got back goal side. Kayembe heads it high up in the air. Vox can bring it back down, he's shoved in the back by Luther. Lee sends a high ball inside the penalty area, which clears Eberselli, and it's going to be picked up by Chioso, over on the right-hand side. Chioso getting a great one to here with Rodriguez, cross the face of goal, Scarlett slid in, and he must have been a stud's length away from turning it in for 1-0. Well, that's the bit of magic that we've been looking for. Brilliant play from Peter Chioso down the right-hand side. He picks up the ball on the touchline, what, 15 yards out, but he plays a 1-2, and he comes inside, and he is on his left foot, so he almost looks like he's falling, and he just tries to play it towards the back post, either hoping it goes in and curls in at the far post, or Dane Scarlett can get on the end of it. In the end, it was in between the two, and it's ended up Oxford not able to get the goal, and Watford certainly breathing a sigh of relief, but that's the type of bit of quality that we've been looking for we've been missing so far in this game yeah the best moment of the game by some considerable distance they're all coming up that mistake by Porteous Shaq Matanza will bring the ball forward now for Watford out towards the left hand side that's the Eberselli coming forward and he's got plenty of yellow shirts to try and hit he's laid it back instead Morris clipping it in awkward bounce for Brown and then for Lee in behind him who's headed it away just about down towards the touchline Andrews getting it forward Bar goes to ground under a clean challenge. Ball goes back out for Andrews and it's headed away by Long. Then Kayembe walks it, drop over his shoulder. Tries to bring it down the top of his left foot. Scarlett with a lovely turn. Referee just paused for a moment. The ball stuck between Scarlett's legs as he was almost down on all fours. One of the Watford players then had a kick out of the ball. And the referee is given a free kick Oxford's way. And Barr has been booked 
Well, he's let a few things go already, the referee, in terms of fouls, and I actually didn't think that was a foul, especially the way that the referee set the standards for tackles coming in. I think it's almost Dane Scarlett's trying to do a coif turn and sort of slipped while doing it, and Portis just put in a strong challenge. I was worried a little bit for Portis in a way. I was thinking, well, oh, be careful, you just got a yellow card yourself. Plus, you're right to mention him. He thought he's Roberto Carlos or Zinedine Zidane with a little turn he tried to do that led towards Oxford chance. Uh, your centre half, just do what centre halves do. Watford well, struggling to uh, really get too much of a foothold in this game despite the possession. They've actually struggled this season in matches against bottom nine opposition, which you wouldn't necessarily anticipate. Just one point from three games so far against bottom nine sides. That was the draw with Coventry here. They lost away to Luton, famously. They lost at Preston as well. Just the one point out of a possible nine and struggling to make too much headway at the moment here. But on the front foot with Ebersali, setting up Kai Embe onto his right foot. And he's sent it sailing into the Oxford fans away to our right-hand side. Six to go to half-time, Scott Minto, nil-nil. Yeah, Tyler Goodwin did really well there because Kayembo very left-footed and wants to have that shot on the edge of the box straight in front of goal, 20 yards out. So he made sure he wasn't allowed to, then had to come in onto his right. It's almost a question of, OK, don't shoot from there. Going to score in the top corner on your right foot, fair enough. And I think if you'd have put another goal on top of the goal, he still probably wouldn't have scored. No, he has been in a decent form here at Vicarage Road, as we mentioned earlier, but... You, you wouldn't know it from that necessarily I hope that better moments lie ahead ball's gone out for a throw to Watford on the near touchline which is their right and the throw taken by Porteous and it goes via the goalkeeper back out towards Morris now Shakhtadze he's got such a bright future ahead of him and now he's created more chances than open play, in open play than any other player in the championship this season Porteous with a delivery from the right-hand side, which bounces once and straight into the hands of Cumming. Well, just going back to Shaq Patadze, scored at Millwall on the opening day, and he hasn't scored since, but he has set up so many opportunities for others, the former Slovan Bratislava man, and he looks like a player who could easily belong in Premier League company. Yeah, we were speaking earlier, weren't we, to the local journal, and he was saying he could be a Premier League player. I've heard that inside Watford, in the dressing room, I believe he can be a Premier League player playing in Europe. He's got that much ability. Oxford on the front foot here. Rodriguez almost there, but he gets Scarlett in. And Watford get their angles right defensively, and Luce can get it out to the uh, left-hand side. Eberselli will come forward. He's got Bio ahead of him. Eberselli's just danced around the challenge of Kioso. Now he's inside the penalty area, and his touch let him down. Six or seven seconds of sublime play from Festi Ebersele. And then it just ricocheted, I think, off his, almost his standing foot and rolled away through to Jamie Cumming and the chance had gone. Yeah, I mean, I saw him a couple of weeks ago playing right wing back against Blackburn. As I say, he, he was brilliant down the right-hand side. He, he, he was my man of the match. And that's the first time he's been able to really open his legs and, and get a good stride in there. He's gone past one play and... Exactly right. He's almost tried to do a step over and kicked it with his wrong foot there, but more positive play from him. We want to see. Morris heads the ball away for Watford inside his own half. Looser turning it forward towards halfway. Bio going up for it. Joshua Kefram mops up at the back. Does really well for Oxford. It's really interesting. Oh, McEachran ball in possession. Goalkeeper playing it out to him. Then worked for by Kayembe. That allowed coming a second opportunity to sweep up on the edge of his own box. But they've still got problems here, Oxford. Barr will drive the ball inside the penalty area. They end up getting a corner out of it. Jamie coming hugely relieved it's not more. My goodness me. What was coming doing? Trying to play the ball to McEachran there when you've got three Watford players around him. You don't play a straight ball. It's as simple as that because he doesn't know who's behind him. And in the end, he's nipped in. And what an opportunity that was for Watford in the end. To be fair to, to Cumming, he's made, you know, he's, he's how do I phrase it? He, he, he's made sure that his mistake didn't end up in being a goal. He's come out quickly. That's really poor goalkeeping play. It's a Watford second corner, which uh, Lusa fires in. It's easily headed away by Long. Volley back in by Eberselli. Cleared with interest through towards the Watford goalkeeper, Daniel Backman. 
whose long ball forward towards the edge of the penalty area is then repelled in the air by Kiyoso. McEachern can chest it down, a much more assured touch room this time. And he just flights it forward left footed and Eberselli will run round it, mop up and play it back to his goalkeeper. Two minutes to go in this first half. No, no. I'm pretty sure coming is absolutely breathing a sigh of relief there and that's taught him a lesson. You know, again, all for this, I'm all for the playing out from the back, but when it's at the right time, and that was so at the wrong time, and McEachern in the wrong position with his body shape, looking straight at the goalkeeper, not able to get on the half turn, doesn't know what's behind him, then it's a straight pass into him. You just don't do it there, it's basic stuff. Well, Kayembe drives a, a, a hopeful ball forward, and it was hopeful with a capital H, it was no chance of being able to find Bio. And it just drifts through to the goalkeeper. We talked about how pleased Des Buckingham will be, but in the context of this injury list, even more so, no Sibley or Nelson or Edwards or Thornley or Bennett or Poeheta or Brannigan or Phillips or Dembele. I mean, it's such a long list for a club that had just won promotion. So for them to be 16th and to be more than hanging in there here at Vicarage Road tonight is a credit to all involved. Well, I mean, you know, you look at the table and you say they've done well considering how where they've been for the last few years and as you mentioned, those players and the amount of players, well, it, it, it does make it pretty sensational. They just want to try and keep above because, look, they're in a really good position in terms of where they are on the table but there's still only two points above the relegation zone. Lose this and results go away, they're in, they're in trouble. And they might be in trouble here, Shaq Matanzi playing it forward. Just forced Bio a little bit wider than he wanted to go. But Bio's got it, left hand side of the penalty area, he's in the box, toe pokes it back. Kayembe, McEachern saw what was going to happen and can half clear. Watford come again with Ebersale. His ball in, swept towards goal by Lusa, and that's a goal-saving block from Elliot Moore. Because that was on target, he was going to whistle into the net. And Moore just stuck out a leg and he's deflected off it and gone wide for a corner. Well, I tell you what, that was a really good ball in and it was almost a cutback. And the, the Oxford defence had kind of dropped off, so Lusa found a bit of space, he got good connection on it. Moore just positioned himself in the right way. I'll tell you what, if that had gone just around him, I think the keeper would have been unsighted and wouldn't have got anywhere near it. He certainly would have reacted very late to it. In the three minutes of out of time at the end of this first half, nil-nil the score on TalkSport 2. Andrews showing for the short corner, but it is fired inside the box, very deep, and headed off the line by Kieran Brown. Without that touch, he would have gone straight in. Lucifer fires another ball inside the penalty area. Two important Oxford headers get it away. Easily Watford's best spell of pressure, this. We don't want half time to come now. Shaq Matanza tries to take on his man. Vox stands firm and concedes a throw. It's all my schoolboy stuff, isn't it? I'm going to try and score from the corner. <laughs> he very nearly did. We saw it happen in a schoolboy game last week and it very nearly happened there. It was a really good defensive header from Kieran Brown. Left footed ball in from Kai Embe. Uh, bounces through the uh, penalty area. And that goes out of play. And uh, you know my son's a goalkeeper. It wasn't him that conceded <laughs> it, I hasten to add. It was at the other end. I just thought did, I, he, did he give him a look? And I, go, I, I just thought I'd better mention that. Did he give him a look just down the, when, when that goal went in? Make sure that doesn't happen to you. <laughs> Ball's out of play for a throw. We've uh, got a minute of uh, first half stoppage time to go, nil, nil. I think you're absolutely right, though. As, as happy as Des Buckingham will be with the scoreline and, and the way they've played up until the last five or six minutes, there's no doubt about it. Watford don't want half time. They've stepped it up. Well, so just trying to get the ball out of their own half at the moment. Might not be able to do that before the uh, half time whistle goes because they've conceded another throw. The throw that Ryan Andrews takes, and he has worked it back inside his own half, but it's still Watford that are in possession here. And a chance for Morris to get the ball forward. Back with him to Imran Lusa. Porteous will come forward on the uh, right-hand side. Lusa again, coming forward towards the edge of the penalty area. Around a couple of challenges, uh, beaten by McEachern in the third. He's got it forward towards Dane Scarlett, little step over from him. Pollard didn't fall for it. And Lucy gets it back here for Watford. One last opportunity before half time for the Horns to get themselves ahead. But Lucy's ball forward towards Barr has come off it and gone out of play for a throw. Kieran Brown will be in no hurry to take this at all. And in fact, his throw might well be the last touch of the first half. 
Well, the ponytail defender launches it forward. That is indeed the half time whistle. There's a big ovation from the Oxford fans away to our right hand side for the valiant defensive effort that their team have put in. Only in the last four or five minutes, really, were Watford in a position that they could stamp any authority on it. Oxford had a, a few nervy moments at the back, but they survived them. And a hard time of Vicarage Road is Watford nil, Oxford nil. And there are no changes as yet, although the way that Mark Harris was warming up during the half time interval suggests that it might not be too long before he is introduced. It is going to be Watford that get us off and running for the second half. Yellow shirts with the thinnest of dark grey pinstripes on them, red shorts and socks. Now they're kicking from right to left. And Oxford in their change kit of white shirts and shorts. Nil, nil the score. And Watford, the better side in the opening five, or the, uh, the final five minutes of that opening half. But prior to that, not an awful lot really between the two teams, despite the fact that Watford were having the majority of possession. Oxford defended it very well. Ball goes out of the Watford right-hand side. It's played for towards Lusa by Andrews and he's trying to get Eberselli in and Eberselli is goal side of Kiyosho who just did enough just look for all the world as though he's going to be able to score it's a brilliant run by Eberselli but back came Kiyosho whether he's given him a slight nudge whether he's got a slight touch on it I don't know the goalkeeper picked it up which suggests that it isn't the latter but it looked for all of the world it was, it was going to be 1-0 to Wofford there Right, two bits of brilliance there. First of all, the run from Eberselli coming inside Kioso was, was brilliant. And, and then Kioso, as he stepped across him, he knows if he brings him down because he's already in front of him, he's getting sent off. He's through on goal. That's a red card. He doesn't want to go down to 10 men so early in the second half. So he lets him go, but then he comes around the other side, just nudges him, but not enough to give away a penalty. And in the end, Eberselli falls over. Uh, do you know what? That's really good wing play from both of them, I have to say. Nil nil score, two minutes into the second half. Watford trying to get themselves into a position that they can turn the screw. Shepard has done well, good injection of pace away from Rodriguez. And a heavy touch, the Kekran almost won it back, but Shepard finds Andrews. Left footed effort from him is well wide. But Watford on the front foot at the start of the second half in a way that they uh, just couldn't do in the start of the first well if you're a Watford fan or neutral this is what we wanted to see didn't we a little bit of action already seen it in the first couple of minutes and I said about how Tom Cleverley would be saying look almost forget that half time is happening you mentioned it just as it was coming up they, they didn't want it to come try and start with that intensity that you finish with the first half because for too long in that first half Oxford seemed comfortable defensively and Watford definitely have stepped it up there's a poor clearance by Cumming. And swept straight out of play for a throw that will be taken over on the Watford right-hand side in front of the Graham Taylor stand. Taken by Andrews. Work back to the uh, back three of Porteous and Pollock and Morris. Playing in front of Daniel Backman tonight. And then it's Andrews, Lucet, Kayembe and Ebersele. Oh, and Shaq Patanza and Bio up front. Oxford have got coming in goal. Long, Moore and Brown. Kioso, Volts, McEachern and Lee. And Goodrum and Rodriguez buzzing around in support of Dane Scarlett up top. Watford will bring it forward again. Playing in towards Bio and knocked away from him. And turned by Volts through the midfield for Ruben Rodriguez. The former Knox County man bringing it forward. Just trying to invite the challenge from uh, Imran Lucy. Didn't have to wait too long. And he's won a free kick on halfway. He did well there, didn't he? There was no way he was getting out of that. He was almost going into a, a cul-de-sac. And he wasn't going to beat those two Watford players for pace. So he just made sure he put his body there, got the nudge and went down. Play forward again from that free kick. And by Oxford and returned easily. By Eberselli. Now Lusa. He was unhappy with the first free kick that was given against him. He's livid with that one. Foul on Will Vox. But he had the sense not to react angrily. He looked accusingly in the direction of fourth official James Limington, but it was nothing more than that. He was able to keep his temper under control. It is a free kick to Oxford, and it's 20, 25 yards outside the Watford penalty area. Well, so he should have done, Jim. That was a blatant foul. Bayembe was complaining even more. He needs to be careful. He's on the yellow card. So McEachern stands over this. 
Well, they've rolled it down the right-hand side of the area for good room and for a great position. Oxford haven't been able to make the most of it because his high cross has sailed through the six-yard box and straight out of play past the far post with nobody having to worry about it from a Watford perspective. And it's still nil-nil, five minutes into the second half. Yeah, it was poor that, wasn't it? A quick free kick, played out wide, took the touch. Everselli did really well trying to close him down and that put Goodrum under a lot of pressure. And under that pressure, he just put the ball over the goal. Well, that Arsenal-Brighton game in the WSL has now finished after so much stoppage time. Arsenal won it by five goals to nil. Uh, Manchester City leading their game at home to Spurs 4-0 in the last 10 minutes. City will be four points clear of Chelsea. But the Blues will have two games in hand. Arsenal fourth after their win tonight. Lusa playing the ball over the top. Uh, it should be easy enough for coming. He's forced outside the penalty area just to sweep up. Hooks it away with his left foot straight out for a throw which is taken by Kayembe. Back from him to Imran Lusa. Kayembe again to Lusa and then back inside the centre circle. The ball comes from Morris now towards Ebersele. Ebersele coming in off the left flank. Kayembe's got it. Kayembe hooks it left footed away from Goodrum and it'll be brought down by Barr. Pass one challenge and then Brown has to slide in and in doing so hits the ball straight at the corner flag. And it's taken a touch off the corner flag and gone the right side of it from a Watford perspective. They've got a corner, which is their first of the second half. Well, they just need to be careful they don't concede here. Watford very much on top. And if Watford do score and get that important opening goal at home, they could be in trouble, Oxford. In comes the corner. Looking for Morris's flick at the near post. And it was clear past it. Oxford get it away towards halfway. Locked up though by Eberselli. Backman's had precious little to do for most of the night. He diverts the ball out towards the right-hand side. Andrews will drive it forward. That one headed away easily by Chioso. Returned by Eberselli. Then brought down in the midfield by Matty Pollock. Pollock controlling it to Ryan Porteous. And Porteous will just emerge over the halfway line and bring in Kayembe. Kayembe forward to show the name Shaq Patanza. He controls it with his right foot. George and working it out to the right-hand touchline for Andrews. Andrews to Kayambe. Watford stringing the passes together. Probably 15 or so of them in this move, which has involved seven or eight of the outfield players. Now Eberselli coming off the left-hand touchline. 20 yards inside Oxford territory, but still they'll go backwards rather than be able to find that incisive through ball. Chapatazzi able to turn in the midfield. Almost a brilliant ball forward from him. Just took a little deflection, I think, of the knee of Kayembe on its way through. Stopped it getting to Andrews. And Cummings very grateful that he can just pounce on the ball and pick it up. We're seven and a half minutes into the second half at nil-nil. I just felt that Chak Matadze tried to force something there that wasn't on because they'd had so many passes. I think he felt, OK, we've got to try and do something. And that pass was never really on. Just, just keep moving it. That's what they're trying to do. One, two, touch football. Barnsley have won their game against Rotherham, beating them 2-0. They're up to fourth with a goal in each half. One from Russell, one from Humphreys. And Rotherham staying mid-table. Jamie Cumming rolling the ball outside the penalty area, then driving it forward. Eberselli going up for it, beaten by Chioso, but he wasn't sure where the ball had gone. Rodriguez is able to pick it up. Scala can take it on the half turn. Principal options to his left. And he just waited and waited, and by the time he played it, Andrews had read it and was there to intercept and get it away. And now he can find Barr. Barr will take on Brown, he's got the pace to beat him. Sweeps it in, and Bio scores for the second attempt. Watford have the breakthrough. Bakun Bio with the goal. Last week's hero with four at Hillsborough. And he breaks the deadlock tonight. But it's all about the quality on the counter-attack at Barr. Played in. Barr with the initial effort. Coming. Stop that. But there's nothing you can do about the second one. The follow-up. Just flicked into the ground. It loops up and in. And Watford lead Oxford 1-0. And that goal has initially come from Oxford on the attack. And Dane Scarlett not playing the ball out wide when he should have done earlier and then when he did he gave the ball away we talked about how Oxford look much more vulnerable when they're being counted themselves and they're not able to get all five defenders back 
that allowed Barr to just use his pace down the right hand side and they couldn't live with him the Oxford defence he's cut the ball back still Bayou he gets really good connection on it it's a really good save from coming but he's able to react to it first coming almost makes the second save but he still doesn't in the end it comes off his arm it bounces down and just slowly goes into the net I've got to say Watford even before half time but certainly afterwards have been by far and away the better side and deserve to be one goal up yeah they certainly deserve the advantage now 10 minutes into the second half Bio trying to go over the goalkeeper with the first one he tried to go under him with the second and coming did read it and diving down from the initial save he got a right hand to it but it only divert the ball into the ground and behind it and Watford lead by a golden hill and their record is exemplary this season they won every game in which they scored first Scarlet offside as Oxford try and work it forward there five out of five in the league and another couple of cup ties as well so seven games this season Watford have gone one nil up they've won the lot the only side who's still got a 100% record in the championship in matches in which they've gone one nil up can Oxford bounce back they have come from behind a win at Preston this season they've got work to do now Shaq Patadze bringing it forward again for Watford little back heel flick from him Kayembe trying his luck but he didn't really get hold of it with a toe poke effort that was probably going to be going wide anyway and I think Oxford will make some changes in a moment a couple of the substitutes are just being called over the bench I think Harris will be coming on 1-0 Oxford leader here on TalkSport 2 yeah and the biggest thing I can say for Oxford is don't concede that second goal if they do then it is game over you just talked about the stats suggest that when Watford come go 1-0 up here at Vicarage Road they normally go on and win the game well if they go 2-0 up then they definitely will win the game I mean it's 5 wins out of 6 with the other one being a draw in the league it's 7 wins out of 8 in all competitions the other one being that draw they are very very strong at home whether they're playing really well or whether they're not playing so well like the game I saw a couple of weeks ago but at this moment in time performance very good scoreline very good they should go for the throat go and get that second goal Idris El Mazzini is going to be coming on for Oxford in a moment as well there's Evers Helicott quite control a long ball that is playing out of the Watford left Mazzini will be never continue his record as an ever present this season and Harris will join him off the bench a man who scored in the first four league games but hasn't netted in ten since Harris for Scarlett the first change and El Mazzuni is going to come on for McKechnie so there's just going to be a slight change of emphasis in the midfield to accommodate that well they've been overrun in midfield aren't they and we just talked about how Dane Scarlett gave the ball away which led to the goal now he can turn around and say yeah but I gave the ball down that end and he's still got to defend it well but they just look so open and Watford are very very good on the counter there Bayer making his way forward winning a throw that goal the 70th goal of his professional career at almost exactly a goal every three games Pollock's got the ball at the back for Watford back from him to Porteous roll forward in towards Lusa and two of the Watford centre-halves exchange passes again now it's played down towards the third of the Morris who will uh, take a touch roll at four saw Shaq Patanza on the left but Worked it back instead for Pollock in the middle of the three centre halves. Ryan Porteous on the right of them has got it. And now it goes back Pollock's way again. And it looks as though it might see Oxford's run without an away win in a second tier fixture continue yet further. The last time that they won a game away from home at this level was at Bramall Lane on March the 26th, 1999. Stop his time goal from Nicky Banger. Got them over the line on that occasion. Now Shotton, the manager back then. Haven't run away from home in the top two divisions since then. And it does look as though that run might continue tonight. Coming. Trying to fire one out towards the left-hand touchline. Didn't find Brown. Andrews brings it forward. Wins the corner as Elliot Moore is back to turn the cross away. Well, that was good position again. We spoke about it in the first half of Elliot Moore. Certainly there because if Andrews had... It, and really, he should have got the ball past him with that cross. But the three Watford players, desperate to get on the end of it. Oxford hanging on in at the moment.
And who's the subject of the adulation from the Watford fans? Lusa will take the corner, it's Watford's fifth of the night, they lead 1-0, hungry for more now, in towards the near post, Pollock was the target, it was knocked away by Volks and then by Goodrum. Well, so much time for Ebiselli just to come back onto the loose ball, although he had to try back inside his own half to pick it up. Well, lays it back for Daniel Backman and he will drive it forward, Porch is still up, well, but it's headed away from him by Sam Long. And out for a throw that'll be taken on the Watford left hand side. We reach the hour mark. Watford one, Oxford nil. And certainly from the dominance in this second half and the, the, the latter stages of the first, a very good value now for a 1 0 advantage. Yeah, they have. You know, where they got a 1 0 win a couple of weeks ago, where well, I saw against Blackburn, and really say that they deserve to win that game, but they found a way to win here at the moment. They definitely deserve to win. Performance much better. We do need that second just to make sure. Get a Sally. Stopping his tracks by Long, goes out of play for a throw, taken quickly by Bio, Shakhtar back to Morris, Morris to Lusa, and then through the midfield to Porteous, and out towards the right-hand side for Andrews. Great ball by Andrews into uh, Lusa, and then Harris goes to ground, the uh, referee says play on, no foul against the Welsh international, then give it away in the midfield, but Morris has rectified his own error. But in doing so, has actually fouled Rodriguez. A an angry reaction on the Watford bench from uh, Tom Cleverley. Uh, Damon Lathrop just pulls him back, the Watford assistant manager, in the sense that uh, perhaps his gaffer was getting a little bit too irate there and told him just to take a breath, and he would make the point himself to the fourth official. I wonder who he's learned that from. Well, the other thing is that Cleverley's suspended if he picks up a yellow card tonight because it will be his third of the season and uh, as a result of that he would have a touchline ban two of the yellow cards because the Ebiselli has just gone in the book for uh, blatantly pulling down Peter Chioso fourth player booked along with Portius and Barr and the Kekron of Oxford and it's given a free kick to the use which will be taken midway inside the Watford half only about a yard in from the right hand touchline Will Bolts in his white boots standing over this chance for him to fire it in right foot it's a good ball as well off the top of Kieran Brown's head just got a little bit too big on him too quickly otherwise he might have had a free header Watford get it away Shaq Matanzi away from Goodrum's challenge in the midfield but he couldn't find the way past El Mazzuni who dropped back in and defended it well now Shaq Vitanzi works it forward, Ebersali is in there, Barr might yet get there as well, the angle's tight, Barr trying to set himself up for a shot at the corner of the six yard box, he couldn't quite keep the ball under control and turn, and just allow Oxford the opportunity to get it away for another corner. What a ball from Shaq Vitanzi, amazing, he was going on an amazing run and then in the end he, he kind of got tackled, he, the ball fell to him again and he looked up first time and whipped the ball over the top but with spin as well for it to come back and actually you know the Watford bench started coming out and I wondered whether you know, Bar just perhaps would have thought that he'd go down there because he got a touch from Kyoto but in the end you know, he stayed on his feet and didn't quite get the, either the penalty or the goal well Watford are going to make their first change at the moment uh, we're going to see Larussi come on well, Larissi, one of the players left out of the starting lineup, the Algerian international who was uh, loaned to Sheffield United last season from Troyes and has uh, come back to English football for a, a second season. Former Liverpool man, and he's uh, going to be coming on. He usually plays at left back. Just asking for a little bit of clarification of exactly how and where they want him to play, whether it's going to be a straight swap for Ebersali, it looks as though it will be, he's not going to be able to continue after uh, receiving treatment inside the penalty area, and this will be a big blow for Watford because he has been excellent. He's been, uh, he's one of those where he's just built for that wing-back role, he can get up and down, his, his final ball is, is very good as well, and of course he's, he's a right-footed player, but playing on the left, been a really good battle between him and Kyoto. It's a shame to see, because it looks like he's really struggling there. Yeah, it looks like a bad one, uh, because as he leaves the field, he has got Watford medics either side of him who are bearing his weight, he can't put any weight at all through his left knee, so he will make way, and he's going to be replaced by Larussi, a big ovation. 
and firstly Eddie Sully, the Irishman, as he uh, makes his way on. It's part of a double change because they brought Rocco Vatter on as well. Vatter, the teenager, number 10, who, aside from Celtic, for whom he made half a dozen senior appearances. And so he's on. Vatter replacing Barr. So a double change made, and Watford resume play with a corner, which is worked short by Shaq Batadze, then played back in. And Moore wasn't taking any chances as to whether his goalkeeper was going to get there or not, and he heads it away and out for a, another corner. So just confirmation of the changes. Larusi for Eberselli, and Vatter for Barr. Shaqatazi to take another corner, which will be what's fourth of the second half. They lead 1-0, 25 minutes left to play here on TalkSport 2. In from Shaqatazi again, looking for a near post flick, which wasn't forthcoming. Almost broke Vatter's way, didn't quite. Oxford clear it, Shepatadze taking on a beat in Goodrum, now he's inside the penalty area, plenty of traffic to navigate, oh what a delicious ball towards the far post that was headed away, and headed away well by the Oxford back line, but it was a magnificent ball in, and Kieran Brown heads it clear with two Watford players converging on him. Now Watford switch it quickly back out of the left hand side, shepatazzi has got it once more, all he can do this time is win a corner but his set piece delivery is good. He's starting to show his quality now isn't he, just dribbling inside and, and he's one of those very few players that is able to dribble with pace and he's whipped the ball to the far post and Akumbaya was ready to jump and just head it in at the far post, brilliant last ditch header away from the Oxford defence. 66 gone, 1 for 1, Oxford nil. second goal looking far more likely to come at that end rather than an Oxford equaliser, Shapatadze's latest corner is just smuggled over his own bar by the goalkeeper, he's trying to score again Jim, well you couldn't bet against it, he could have had two straight from a corner, channeling his inner Douglas Louise, in comes the corner from the far side, this time from Lusa, heading back across the edge of the six-yard box, kept alive by Porges, then Pollock, goalkeeper stranded, back in again, a looping header that goes just over Cummings' bar, and he's very grateful to watch it just drift over, they're struggling to defend those set pieces at the moment, haven't considered a single goal from a set piece this season, but struggling to deal with the Watford threat right now. Oxford will make another change. Kioso coming off. Hit it to Rabes. The Dutch right wing back side from Utrecht is going to come on to replace him. Made his full debut on Tuesday and scored the winner in a crucial victory against Hull City. And on again here with a quarter of the game remaining to Rabes for Kioso. 1 0 to Watford. What I would say is there's Buckingham certainly trying to change the, the course of this game. And the control of the game by making substitutions but it's doing absolutely nothing at the moment Watford in full control all the while it's 1-0 Oxford still very much in it Kieran Brown comes forward towards halfway played out towards the far touchline ricochets off Kayembe Vox is in there he's lost out the bio Shapatansi making a the run they played him in now he's on the left hand side of the penalty area chops it back onto his right foot and coming onto it Vata, rather than pulling the trigger, just trying to play an additional pass. There was nobody there to collect it. Watson very grateful to be able to get it away. The back is going to come again through Pollock. To find Porteous. 68 gone here on Talk Sport 2. Second half, 71-29 possession for Watford. They've had five shots to one. Oxford haven't had a single attempt on target. And it's been a much better second period from Watford. They really have been able to turn the screw and they're going to be fourth in the table at the end of the night as things stand. Yes they are, I'm looking at the table as it currently stands and that must be paradise for Watford fans to see them in the playoff places. Obviously the rest of the match day schedules over the weekend but well, this is dreamland as it stands. A Plymouth away for the next. That's another game that we will bring you live on TalkSport 2 in a couple of Fridays' time. And they've got Plymouth away next to a 20th. They've got Bristol City at home or 11th and QPR who are 23rd. 
And then, Car- and then Cardiff and Hull on the back of that, who are, who are both down bottom eight yes, as well. Yes, sorry, Cardiff, Hull, and before they meet, meet West Brom. So, you know, let's get the cliche of there's no easy game in the championship. E- uh, you know, any time. However, the way they're playing at the moment, especially at home, is a great opportunity for them. Yeah, they don't see Oxford turn this around against them. It's going to extend Watford's unbeaten run here at Vicarage Road to 13. They haven't gone 13 unbeaten at home since the 96-97 season, Watford. Lusa, caught by Goodwin. And there'll be a, a free kick to Watford. He's got a touch of cramp as well, Imran Lusa. And, and the thing is as well, that, that builds momentum. You can talk about it from a negative point of view for teams that are down there and are still trying to find their, their first or second win. But also it's the same for teams that didn't expect to be up there. And it's like you're you're waiting for them to drop. But as each game ticks off, especially at home, if they can pick up more away from home, I'm not suggesting they have to score six every time they did against Sheffield Wednesday, but they can pick up points away from home, make themselves difficult to beat and then win at home. Before you know it, you get to Christmas, you're in and around the playoff areas, then suddenly you've got a great opportunity. Shepard Tazza. Controlling the ball in the midfield, controlling the game at the moment. Two Oxford players converged on him, able to win it back. Work for by El Mazzuni. Now it comes down towards the right-hand side for Oxford as we welcome listeners from TalkSport back to Vicarage Road. With 20 minutes to go, Watford lead by Golden Hill. And they've been much the better side in the last uh, half hour, 35 minutes of this game. Back in Bayo with the goal. Nine minutes into the second half after great play by Quadro Bar down the right-hand side of the penalty area. Oxford looking for an equaliser here. And they might yet get it right for an effort from Tarabas. Poking it towards goal five yards out. After a Watford clearance from Porteous and hit Pollock. And bounced invitingly to the right wing back in front of goal with only the keeper to beat their best chance of the night and it's a let off for Watford oh and he's only been on the pitch for a couple of minutes and a mix up in the Watford defence as the ball is headed back and then off another defender and it's there for Tarvest he's six yards out my goodness me what a fantastic opportunity it's a little bit high so he kind of has to almost stick his leg out but if they're going to get anything else in this game they have to score there they're not going to get a better opportunity than that uh, the goal that Watford scored almost uh, 15 minutes or so ago now. First time effort in from the right-hand side of the penalty area by Quadro Bar. Bio coming onto it, and he hit it right-footed, trying to get it over the goalkeeper who made a really good save. It came back out to Bio again. And the man that scored four at Hillsborough in the space of half an hour last week, and Watford 6-2 win, just squeezed it under the goalkeeper for 1-0. It's Shaq Patazzi who's running the game now for Watford, letting it onto his right foot for Vata, and his effort is well beaten away. Certainly, barring that Tarabas chance moments ago, Watford looking the more likely side to score the second goal in this game. Got about 20 minutes of playing time left, continues on TalkSport 2. He got the apex, he's in a swipe left, swipe right, and keep abreast of everything that is going on. All oh, Teddy Smart speaker to play, TalkSport 2. It's 17 minutes to go, and Watford having a corner. They lead by a golden L. And this corner will be taken on the Hornets lap. Lusa, unmarked on the edge of the D. Matter is in there as well. Oxford have got everybody within 14 yards of goal. It's another attempt to goal from Shaq He didn't quite get the angle right on that one. It's headed away by Long. Comes back out to him though. Left hand side of the box is overrunning. And ends up uh, kicking it back through the six yard box. And straight at the goalkeeper goal kick 17 to go what a chance for Taravas though amazing chance I mean to be fair it would have been so much against the run of play but it doesn't matter when you're under the cost you're a smaller club promoted club struggling away from home not having many chances and very much under the cost when you do get that chance oh you have to put it away Kudrum and El Mazzuni linking up in the midfield for Oxford all is played back for Long. Long to Taravas, who uh, had experience playing in Italy, signed from Utrecht. Long, representing his uh, hometown club with distinction over a good number of years now. All headed out on the 
far touch line by Andrews, four towards Batu, chased a lot of scores and kept it in, and the crowd really appreciating that. Back it goes towards Batman. Batman launching it forward. Bio has done really well, he's wrestled to the ground there by Moore. The referee might revisit that. Shapatans, he saw the keeper off his line, tried to chip him from 35 yards. But once the ball goes out of play, I think Elliot Moore is going to pick up a yellow card because it was a, a blatant pullback on Bio. He's <laughs> just hoping now that the ball stays in play for as long as possible and somehow the referee forgets. But you're, you're spot on, Jim. Free kick now. He's got to go to Elliot Moore and give him the yellow card because he is absolutely pulled back in Bayou. He's done it. Oh, wow. So he's booked Bayo for waving an imaginary yellow card, which by the letter of the law yes. is correct. Okay. But I'm amazed that he hasn't booked Moore as well. Oh, let's see. He has now. Interesting. He went to Bayo first, but yeah, I think he's just made everyone livid around here and even myself and look I'm not a Watford fan but Moore definitely made the foul first yellow card should have gone to him <laughs> in the end they both got booked and look yeah Bale can't be doing that you don't want to be seeing players trying to get other players booked the that's the referee's decision so third yellow card of the season uh, for Bayer and a fourth yellow card of the season for Moore the players coming into this uh, incidentally on yellow cards when it's, uh, you've got a fifth you are suspended it's the, the problem that Watford have got with uh, Siralta tonight that's why he's on the bench uh, Ebersele who's uh, gone off injured was one of those and the other is Kioso and he's also left the field ball is out for a throw midway inside the Watford Hub maybe a little bit further forward than that the Vox is going to take it for Oxford 14 to go 1-0 they trail, ball play back towards Fox, Shaq Matanzi slides in, who got the last touch on that? It's the Georgian, it's a corner, which will be taken on the Oxford right-hand side, and remember what they do have, the susceptibility defending set-pieces, conceded seven from set-pieces, the second worst tally in the division so far, Vox raises his left arm above his head, it's an in-swinging delivery, hard one to deal with, referee though saw a push, ball had actually squirted away to a neutral part of the penalty area. The referee saw a push, and it's a free kick which will be taken by Watford inside their six yard box. 13 to go, and another change, Kayembe coming off, and Pierre Duomo, the Belgian defensive midfielder who signed from Antwerp is going to come on to replace him for his fourth appearance for the club. So Romo on to replace Kayembe, changed with 13 minutes left. Yeah, that was a really good ball put in there, wasn't it, from Hawks at the same. And Watford was scrambling, in the end the referee saw a foul, but you know, keep on going on about it. They've been so much under the cosh. What could have been by so far the better side, especially in the second half, but even in the last 15 minutes of the first half as well. And yet, Oxford are still in this game. One set piece, one mistake, one bit of magic. And when you've got the second worst defensive record outside the bottom three, which Watford have, they might feel that they yet need that second goal and a little bit of insurance. Yes, and they're playing the ball around the 18-yard box and the crowd are getting nervous and in the end, Daniel Backman's gone, have it. Just got it upfield. Harris has stopped a counter attack. He's just lent into Lusa. And it'll be a free kick to Watford midway inside their own half. 1-0, 12 minutes to go. Yeah, now Watford defensive record, the worst in the top 14. They've conceded 22 goals, a goal and a half a game. They've prior to tonight scored exactly the same number. They've just edged one ahead in terms of uh, goal score. But uh, a lot of goals, 45 goals in Watford's 15 games this season. Shaq Matanzan bringing it forward. Now getting into a shooting position, right foot in effort. And coming really grateful to be able to deal with that. Just helped it on its way over the bar. Didn't quite get it into the corner as much as he wanted. A little bit too central, but still a really good hit. Yeah, absolutely. Found pockets of space, turned, ran, came inside onto his right foot. It's a really good strike, but it, it curls too much towards the goalkeeper, who does the right thing, tipping it over, but you know, no keeper should be beaten from there. 11 to go. 1-0 Watford here on TalkSport 2. Another Watford corner, almost up into double figures now with the corner cap. Almost headed away by Moore. 
Andrews will mop up on halfway. Right footed ball pinned from him towards Sir Pollock, who's still waiting on the edge of the penalty area. Timed his jump, the, the better of the two players who were uh, trying to attack that. Well, was able to divert it away. Left footed ball in from Shaq Matanzi. Brought down inside the six yard box by Pollock. Couldn't get a hold of the shot. Covering defenders effective blocks. And it remains just 1-0. Oh, Shaq Matanzi now, he is absolutely dominating this game. He's just standing on the ball. Then to Rodriguez, which way am I going to go? Inside or outside? He went on the outside, whipped a great ball in. And look, Pollock was unlucky, but should we just say that if it was Vakun Bayou, perhaps his first touch might have been better in the box? Yeah, Matty Pollock, not known for his goal-scoring prowess, just a one goal in uh, Watford Colours in 38 games prior to tonight, which kind of goes to MK Dons back in the League Cup run earlier this season. Into the final 10 minutes. Oh, lots of fans away to our right hand side. Not silenced by any stretch of the imagination, but I, I think increasingly they're resigned to their fate here. Well, it might only be two points from seven away games at the end of the night. Lusa just drops the ball onto the feet of LaRussi on the left hand side. LaRussi for Shaq Matadze, skipping away from Vox, trying to work it onto his right foot again. He got another shot in, but he's. Curved it wide and out of play. Yeah, I think he should have known there. His body position wasn't quite right. The, the ball was, was too close to his feet. But just the way, first of all, his football intelligence, he finds that, that little bit of space. And then he's able to turn. He doesn't just play the way he's facing all the time. He knows how much he's got around him. Turns, jinks. People don't want to try and dive in. But in the end, there was enough people around him to say, go and shoot from there. And yeah, as I say, his body position wasn't quite right. Right of Watford, taken by LaRussi, helped on by Morris. Long leaning over the top of Bayo could get the ball away. And it's after a throw that'll be taken on the Watford left hand side again by LaRussi. More than a suspicion of a foul throw there. And the referee agrees. And he, he almost got one hand above his head and just bounced the ball into the ground. And it just maybe slipped out of his hands as he was trying to deliver, but it was a clear foul throw. Oxford nick a couple of yards in the restarting play. Look for Harris, who has verbally been feeling on scraps since he's come on. It's the no service at all. It'll be out for another throw, and this one will be taken by Morris, who just finds that the right moment with the ball in his hands just to put it on the deck so he could pull his socks up. And just a couple of inches, just a, well, a few seconds off the play. Morris for Lusa. Back for Morris again. He's not about to squeeze that through. Chat Matanzi. Hiding LaRussi for it. To the penalty area to try and hit. Bio's one of them. And it's a great block by Moore right in front of the goalkeeper. To steer it away. Oxford still hanging in there. Trailing 1-0. Not beaten yet. Watford have got it with Andrews. Left footed ball in from him. Diving headed clearance. Flicks back off Porteous. Vata with what was almost an air shot. Just came off the bottom of his boot. Oxford can clear again, Tavares helping it further away, still they can't get out of their own half really, now it'll be Nolly Ford towards Harris, Rodriguez's touch, finds him at the second attempt, he comes back in the midfield of Cuomo, and Shapatazzi will drive forward, and he's got it inside the penalty area, onto his right foot, challenge from Tavares, perfectly timed, just got it away as he was about to pull the trigger, Oxford again survive and can work it forward, Good refereeing there again, Shaq Matazzi. He's quicker than he looks, isn't he? And he's waiting his space this time. Bio attacking a ball that comes in from the right flank from Bata. And Cummins came out and took it off his head easily. He's good goalkeeping. Yeah, he is quicker than he looks. Yeah, and just, you know, with his socks rolled down, the way he kind of jinks and runs, it looks like it's more sort of skill than pace going past him. But at times he has got that bit of pace as well. Now work forward at the other end, goalkeeper off his line, and he's able to make a save, Backman. He was out in no man's land as the ball fell for Harris, 25 yards out. And as he made his way back, he stumbled. But in losing his footing, it put him lower on the deck, and Harris, in trying to bend it past him into the bottom right-hand corner, 
Backman was down, half down already because he'd lost his balance and tips it around the post for a corner. Oh my goodness. After Watford dominated the game so much, very nearly Oxford got something out of it. And Daniel Backman has been under pressure in recent games, recent weeks from the fans. And with the way he positioned himself and then was running back and had to dive, his position was so bad in terms of knowing where the goal is behind him. He had to dive and just tip it away. Another change made by Oxford as Goodwin comes on for Rodriguez. In comes the corner. Headed away by Lusa on the edge of his own box. He was pushed when had the referee allowed play to develop. Potentially Watford might have had a counter-attack with Porteous making his way forward. It's a confirmation of that change. Rodriguez coming off. Uh, replaced by a striker, Will Goodwin. Uh, from Torquay and Cheltenham man. They signed for £400,000, Oxford United, he's uh, scored the one goal for them so far, he's missed the start of this season through injury. It's uh, only his second appearance in this campaign, it's not the longest, he's got five minutes plus stoppage time to help Oxford conjure up an equaliser, but it will be 5-3-2 pretty much now, because he will play almost on the shoulder of Harris. Did you say x key? I did say x I knew you get that. And I, I mean this with the greatest of respect. When he's playing for Torquay, he didn't look like a player. He's going to move for 400 grand. It's always good to see somebody that you don't necessarily expect to develop do so and blossom so fantastically well as he has done. And uh, hopefully he's going to be able to prove himself at championship level now. As the ball will be worked out towards Terraves. And uh, LaRussi will come back. Back towards his own corner flag. The ball has stopped on the corner quadrant. He was trying to commit to Ramos to make a challenge so he could play it off him and win a throw. So Ramos got out of the way. And it's going to be a long throw which will be taken instead by Oxford down by the corner flag. And there's still only one down with three and a half minutes to go. And this prodigious long throw of Will Vox is going to be called into action again. A little bit of a looping one this time, rather than the slightly lower, flatter trajectory that he can sometimes conjure up. Watford can deal with it. And that looks as though Goodwin was brought down. He is outside the penalty area, although he ended up face down in the turf in the box. I'm sure that is the right decision. The Lucy foul about a yard outside the penalty area, and a big contact had stopped by the time they both went in the box. But a free kick in a really good position here. Watford have not got this one yet. Well, I tell you what, there was still contact going into the box. Yes, the, the majority of the foul was outside, but he could certainly claim that Larucci still had a hold of his shirt when they were falling down inside the box. It's a big decision to give a penalty there, isn't it? Absolutely. But a free kick in a great position. Right in front of the travelling Oxford supporters. Warming up their limbs in anticipation of something special happening here. And again, an 88th minute equaliser. It's a yard from the dead ball line, a yard from the right-hand side of the penalty area. Vox will stand over it. He's got the option of pulling it back for Goodrum, although his body position suggests that's not what he's going to do here. He's got 6-7 in white to try and hit inside the penalty area. He's just clipped it in towards the back post, headed down, and the overhead kick over the bar from Harris. Another really good chance for Oxford to salvage something late in this game. Oh, and he's on the floor. He cannot believe. I, look, it's not a, a, an incredibly shocking chance to miss. He's only like two yards out, but he's, he's having to hook it over himself. But still, any kind of co proper contact by keeping it down, it's high up and he's not able to, to just wait that split second for it to come down. Good save initially from Backman, got to say there was a header, a point blank save, but it's come down, it's bounced. He's no more than two, three yards out, Harris, but he's over, overhead kicked it over. 
Beckham were making his way forward. He's lost out to Morris Watford. Get it forward to relative sanctuary. Kieran Brown mops up, fires it back at his goalkeeper. He's got time and space to control it and get it away from Rocco Vata. And Oxford are on the front foot here as we go into the 90th minute. It was a good save from Batman. And listen, it all happened so quickly. Harris might also be a little frustrated with himself. He couldn't react a fraction of a second more quickly and just turn it in first time rather than a much more high tariff chance with the overhead kick. And as you say, it was a difficult chance, but but a man that has scored the goals he scored, he will be frustrated that he didn't hit the target. And had he hit the target, he would have scored. Yeah, we know how many goals he scored last season, but he's just in that barren run at the moment in the championship. That would have given him and his team so much confidence. Yeah, 19 of them in that promotion winning campaign last season. Tarabas wins the throw. Volks will make his way forward. And Watford fans decidedly nervous now. Volks with a throw, a relatively long one, but back for Goodrum. And that allows Watford to push forward as Oxford take three passes and go all the way back to the goalkeeper. Ball launched for Porteous trying to play everybody offside. He didn't. Ball flashed inside the penalty area is clear. Five minutes of added time. 1-0 Watford as we go into it. Ball over on the Oxford left-hand side. Can't get themselves into a position to deliver from Greg Lee, but he's got it again now. Four from him down the line for Brown. Clear Brown four from centre half. Everybody pushed forward here except for Sam Long. Brown, left footed, hard inside the penalty area. Goodwin with his back to goal. Couldn't turn, but he can set up Goodrum. Goodrum to his right for Volks. Tarabes, oh, he's mishit it. Slices across the ball from the corner of the box and just fires it into the travelling Oxford fans. 1-0 Watford. Four minutes of stoppage time to go here on Talks. Wow, I did not see this coming, Kim. Watford were in full control. And if you'd have told me to be close to getting a, a second goal in this game, I would have said definitely it would have come from the home side. Not so. Oxford have come close. And they are still with just minutes to go very much in this side. And Watford under pressure so much, making more substitutions. Yeah, they're going to make their final changes and bring Tomins and Daniel Jebison on. And it's Lusa and the potential match with a bio who leave the field. So three and a half minutes of added time for these two to make an impression. Tom Ince has played over 400 games in the championship in his career. Most of his career has been played at this level. And Daniel Jebison, the Canadian ball striker alone from Bournemouth, is on for another substitute appearance. He's been used almost exclusively as a sub since signing Paul Watford from Bournemouth back in the uh, opening weeks of the campaign. <laughs> Giving it away. Goodwin was caught, and that's probably going to be a yellow card for Morris. Just went in a little bit high. Free kick which will be taken by Oxford again, another set piece to try and expose this deceived Achilles heel of Watford. Three minutes of added time doesn't sound like much. But if they can pack as much into it as they have the last three minutes, they might yet give themselves a fighting chance here, Des Buckingham's Oxford. Three kick, five yards in for the right-hand touchline. 25 yards outside the penalty area. Folks again to take it. Right-footed, really disappointing delivery. Easily volleyed away. And then chasing after it is Rocco Vata. But the bounce was unkind for him. Goodrum comes back. Vata making life difficult for him. And he could just skewer it back for El Mazzuni. But just was good enough for Oxford there. Now they can break. Get forward towards halfway again. Into the 94th minute. Mark Harris. Good turn from him. But then loses out to the retreating Duomo. Chabotazzi tries to fight Ince. Can't do so. Duomo's there. The Belgian. Taking it out towards the touchline and Andrews drives it forward in the lead. And it goes out of play for a Watford throw and that's just what they wanted. Take the sting out.
out of it with two minutes of stoppage down the guard. You know what, it's been a great finish to this game. Watford looked in full control and with Oxford poor away form, you're thinking, now I'm not really seeing anything here, they're not going to come into this and look close to scoring. But boy, have they been close to the point where Tom Cleverley's made all five substitutions and the Watford fans are biting their nails. Almazuni. Four for Kudrum on Kudrum's done well, he's turned it through the midfield where there was a little bit of space and Tarabas will come onto it. Right footy ball in from him, a much better delivery. Headed away by Pollock. Comes out for Greg Lee outside the penalty area. El Mazzuni again for Oxford in the final minute. High ball in, headed down and wide by Elliot Moore. And that probably was the chance. They've got a corner out of it. Watford fans weren't anticipating that. Goalkeeper comes forward from the back, Jamie Cumming. It is literally all hands to the pump, but Moore will feel that he should have scored there. And now the referee's going to come over. He's just telling everybody to pause. I reckon there's about 45, 50 seconds of play left. Who's getting booked here? It's going to be Tom Cleverley, I think. And that will be a suspension. So he will be banned for the trip to Plymouth. This is probably the last kick of the game, but the, let me tell you, I, I thought the referee made a mistake there. We've seen a replay, it came off a Watford defender. Correct decision. All on this now. So the decision to give a corner is correct. I think that's what the argument was about. Coming is forward. In comes the corner. Flicked on by Goodwin. Cleared though by Ince. And the referee saw a push anyway. It's a Watford free kick, and that should just about be that. Well, we've had the 95 minutes, and now it's just a question of just taking your time, maybe wasting some more. Has to Daniel Batman get even get a yellow card himself? But this should be it as he kicks the ball high. Tom Cleverley will be disappointed that he's going to be suspended for the next game, but his side are moving into the playoff places. Goal kick is taken, play still allowed to continue, there was a substitution within stoppage time and also a few more seconds will have been added because the referee came over to put Tom Cleverley, but that will be that, and still there are been here at Vicarage Road since he took charge, the best run of home form for Watford since the 96-97 season. It's another win. The ninth in ten home games. But boy, were they made to work for it late on by an Oxford side who faded out of the game for about 30, 35 minutes. But when they got going again in the last 20, they really pushed Watford all the way. And they might feel that those late, valiant efforts were worthy of an equalising goal. They came close to it with Harris and Moore and Tanabes. But it didn't come forward. The Oxford travelling supporters stand and applaud another valiant effort from their team. But they could be down close to the bottom three at the end of the weekend. What for them tonight in the top four. They beat Oxford by a golden earth.